Block off, block off. Welcome, people. Um, this little video here that I'm gonna do for you now is basically, it's just a little, uh, a little gear uh, video. God, I miss cocaine. Of basically the kind of stuff that uh, we take out with us when we go out on a wild camp or, you know, when we, when we go out and we do uh, any kind of hiking or, you know, any kind of trip out or anything like that. So, I'm going to go through, we've, we, basically we've had a few uh, DMs of people asking us, um, you know, what type of kit do you use and, um, you know, what, what kind of tools do you take with you and um, how to prepare to go out on their first wild camp and stuff like that. So, um, I'm going to show you today basically some of the items that I take out with me um, that are in my bag, that are in my kit bag. Um, not everything... Not, Everything that I use, obviously, certain people might use different things or it might not work for them. Uh, some of the lads, obviously, like uh, Billy Bandu and Jim Drones, they might have different kit to what I have. Some of us have got the same things. So it's down to your own personal preference and it's down to, uh, you know, what you're comfortable in using and, you know, what kind of uh, budget you want to spend on certain things. And it, it's not it, it's not expensive, you know, like once you get a little bit, a few items here and there, you know, you're pretty much good to go. So don't worry about, oh, you know, I have to get this and I have to spend X amount of money on buying all this, you know, it's, it's going to break my bank and well, nah, you know, some of the things that you want to get, like, uh, may cost a little little bit, others you might get, you know, for cheaper. So this is just what I have and what I use. So it might be different to you, okay? So first thing I want to talk about is my bag okay so the bag that i use when i go out is basically my burghouse okay um it's a free flow 35 and it's it's pretty it's big enough to do what i need it to do it's it gets all my kit in it it gets everything that i need into it and don't get me wrong you know i i, I take a lot of kit with me uh, and when I put the bag on my back and actually start walking for five minutes, because I ain't the fittest and most healthiest people, as you can tell, um, it, it, it does kind of become a bit of a chore. Uh, but when I actually get to camp and I put down my stuff and I go through it all and I get everything out, everything that I take with me, it comes in handy and I end up needing it. So, you know, it's one of them ones. But it does, I, I do, I do, it does the trick. And I fit everything that I need in it. Obviously, I've got all the little stuff that you see on the front of it. It's things that I've added on myself. So, you know, I've got a few carabiners here and there uh, to attach certain things onto my bag. Uh, gives me some, you know, extra carrying space. I've got um, some paracord here. I did actually have some more paracord on there uh, as, a, as an emergency. And when we went on our last football camp to Wide Forest, it actually did come in handy. So... I use some of that, so that's one that I've got left. I do normally have some fishing wire as well, uh, which I carry with me, which uh, if you've watched the video, um, the wide forest, I think it's part three or part two, part two, I think. Uh, I actually use the fishing wire to kind of attach to an alarm, um, which we set as a perimeter around the tent. Um, you know, it was a bit of fun. I just wanted to see if it would work, and, you know, it, it, it did actually uh, do the job, so... Um, yeah, so normally I have a few little bits and bobs on there. Uh, I've got like a little glow stick on the corner here for, you know, just to have a, in case I'm walking at night or in navigating through any kind of woodlands in the dark and you break away from your group and people need to find out or see where you are. So uh, that can come in handy. Um, but yeah, it, it, I mean, it, 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 it's a good bag and it does it to me. It's got a good way support here. Um, obviously the back as well, it's... Um, it's got like a stiff board. Don't ask me what the name is for it. Like I say, you know, I, I couldn't tell you, but once you put everything in it and put it on your back, it's actually really comfortable and it's a really good bag. It, you know, it, the clip's smooth, unclips, does everything I need it to do. Uh, it also comes with a rain bag inside. So if it starts to rain, you can actually pull the bag out in there and wrap it over your pack, which will keep everything nice and dry. So uh, that actually comes in handy. So that's the bag that I take with me. Um, when I do things like, um, when I go out on my bike and, you know, go for a ride along the canal and stuff like that, 
Um, I use a different bag, obviously I don't take that with me. So it's about having what bag's comfortable for you, what kind of scenario you're getting yourself into, um, and then just choosing your loadout from there. And, you know, like I say, just only packing and take what you need to take with you. Anyway, moving on. Some of the items that I do have, like I said, I'll talk about some of the items I take with me. I have down here. So, uh, important one is the water bottle. Um, this is a, it's one of, it's a Gerber bottle, but it's one of the, like the Bear Grylls' um, range. I've had this for, I think about two years now, two and a half years. And to be fair with you, I can't fault it. It's, it's a good bottle. It's plastic. It's made of really tough, tough plastic. Don't ask me for the scientific name. I'm sure you can Google that or go on YouTube and check out the reviews and it will tell you all that kind of stuff. You know, I ain't that smart or that savvy when it comes to all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go through and tell you how much it weighs, the height of it, what it's made of. All I'm going to tell you is it's a good bottle. It's got a little belt loop there that you can attach onto your belt if you want to carry it on your waist or if you want to attach it to your bag via a carabiner or any kind of paracord or anything like that, any straps. Um, it comes in its own little Velcro little wallet thing. And at the bottom, you've got a nice, I think it's like a, an alley or some kind of metal. I don't know if it's titanium. I think it might be aluminium, I think. But it comes with one of these anyway at the bottom, which fits snugly into the bottom of the bottle. Um, so if you're having any kind of, uh, if you've got like a fire or, or what, a burn or anything like that, you want to boil some water or have a hot drink, then that does come in handy. Or you can pour your whatever in there. But yeah, um, so I actually use this. I actually take this with me every day. I actually use this with me at work and, you know, I, I work on building sites and stuff like that. So it, 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 it handles all the you know, the rugged and the rough and tumble and stuff like that. But it's a really good bottle. I recommend it anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my container. I think it holds, I think it's like, I think it might be a litre and a half or something like that. I don't know. You'd have to Google that one anyway. A litre and a half or something like that anyway. It fits a lot of water in anyway, I know that. It does me, you know what I'm saying? It does me. So, that's my, my, uh, my water bottle. Okay. Moving on, secondly, uh, keep it on to the same kind of thing of like your food and your water and stuff like that. You want to take with you, uh, get yourself some decent um, pots, pans or a frying pan or something like that for you to cook your food in. This is what I use. I got this off Amazon. Uh, I think I paid, uh, I don't know, about £12. Um, you go on Amazon, type these in, you get a whole load of things pop up and different shapes, different sizes and whatever. It's got like a little measuring um, gauge on the side there. It's also inside as well. It's not too grubby, but it's inside there as well, so you can see. So I use that um, when, I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I go camping and stuff like that. It does obviously put all my food in and cook um, any kind of soups or boiling water or anything like that. Like obviously you'll see the videos when you're cooking some lamb and having like a lamb kind of stewing it. Um, I do actually have a smaller one of these uh, by, I think it's Euro Hike, which I got from Go Outdoors. Uh, it's, it's a little bit smaller, but that's the one that I put in my bag, which is a smaller bag to my bag house. Uh, I think that's a Viper pack. And I take that with me when I'm on my bike. It's nice and compact. So I have a smaller um, pot system when I ride out on my bike. So I know I'm saying the word um a lot, but I don't do these videos. So this is new to me. So I'm feeling a little bit, um, there you go again. Feeling a little bit shy, I suppose. You know, I'm not really used to it. My friends and family watching this are thinking, how are you not used to the camera? I've been in front of videos and cameras all the, like, all the time, but you know, whatever. It's a different situation, so don't judge me. You know, I might not be the best at this, but I'm trying. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm trying, I'm trying. Moving on. So I've got here my... Little Terra Hiker um, burner, which obviously, you know, which I use for my pots. Um, got my little windproof lighter in there, which I keep with it at all times. Um, this is the this is the little burner. Here. It's very very quick to set up, very compact, easy. You just literally fold out the ends, pull the legs down like so. 
place it on a flat surface. You can obviously pull these in depending on the size of the pot that you have, if you want it smaller or whatever. You basically attach your bottle. You can get different sizes of these to it. And there's a little valve on the side and you can get different ones of these. They all have different kind of nozzles and whatever, but you turn it on via this. And then it has actually got a striker on the side that I use, but I just, I just use that. I use my lighter, it's quicker, um, less fiddly. And once it's in place, I don't really like to move it. So that's what I use um, to cook my food on. And it does the trick. It's, um, it's served me well, it hasn't let me down yet. So that's the kind of burner that I have. Uh, like I say, it's nice and small, compact, fits into this uh, little case here, which is nice. And that goes in my pack. So you want to try and obviously minimize the gear that you have into your pack. Uh, at least I do, so I can carry more gear. Um, hence the name Richard Gear. Shout out to Billy Bandy. But, um, but yeah, so this is the burner that I have. I'm going to turn it off because I don't want to burn down my house. So I'm a bit of a hazard like that. So it's too hot. I'll pop this away. So this is the burner that I use. Like I say, I've used it, I've, I've, I've took it everywhere with me. I, take, I actually carry this with me when I go out on my bike as well. If I go for a ride and I'm out for the day and I, um, uh, yeah. But yeah, so I'll take that out with me on my bike. Um, have some lunch on the canal or whatever. So. That's my Terra Hiker burner. And obviously these you can get by the propane tanks, uh, different sizes on Amazon, or you can go to your go outdoors and stuff like that and buy them. There's different makes. Um, the Coleman are just one that I've been using at the moment. Nothing uh, special about them or anything like that. I just, just what I use. That's my burner there. So, Next item that I have, uh, one of the, the important things that you should take with you when you go on a, a wild plant is a first aid kit. So um, it's a nice little first aid pouch here. I've got like a few items in there. So I've got like a pair of tweezers there, which is for removing any kind of uh, stings or ticks in particular. Um, and then inside my first aid pouch, I've got several items. I'm not going to get the whole lot out for you, but a few things in there. So I've got like I've got like another pair of tweezers. I've got some safety pins, obviously plasters, bandages, stuff like that. Goes without saying. I've got some um, antiseptic cream for any kind of bumps or rashes you might get when you're out. Um, I carry a spray plaster. Uh, it's it's it, it, you know it's. They're useful, get little cuts, the waterproof, spray it straight on, keeps it clean, um, and you, then you don't have to worry about obviously having a plaster falling off or getting any kind of grip behind or anything like that. These are really good. Um, I would recommend having one of these in your first aid kits. I've, I've used it several times, and yeah, I can't fault them, they're really good. So I'd, I'd say to you, get yourself a, a um, spray plaster i've got obviously in here i've got some i've got a pair of rubber gloves um some cotton buds some water purifying tablets shout out to my boy brett that got me these um obviously any type of, if you're out and you ever drink water obviously don't drink from somewhere where you know it's not clean streams rivers obviously anything like that always boil your water if you if you do need to go down that route and obviously use any any kind of water purification system that you're using. Uh, I've actually got a new um, bottle, which is a water purifier, which I'll get to later on in the video. Um, but yeah, so always boil your water if you have to use um, any kind of water out in the wild from streams or any kind of um, water source. Uh, we'll do a video later on down the line of um, how to uh, acquire water and the proper way to purify it and things like that. So. But yeah, so that's my little first aid kit. Very important. Never ever go, never go camping or go anywhere, you know, um, out in the wild or out in the sticks 
you know, far away from home, where you think you might get into some kind of trouble, always have a first aid kit. Only, not only for yourself, but any for anyone that's with you, um, family members, friends. You know, just just be prepared. That's that's the, that's what I would say. Is, you know, always. You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Put it that way. So just be prepared. Take a first aid kit and don't just put plasters in it, bandages and stuff like that. Think about it a little bit and you know put a few items in there that you might need. There are several other items in there. Um, you know, like uh, like a tourniquet and things like that. So you know, this, that's my first aid kit. Um, let's go on now uh, to I have. Another important thing I find when I go out is this little bad boy here. So, and a lot of these items that you see, you can buy them off Amazon. You know, you just have to type them in. I'll put a few links um, in the drop down box uh, for some of the gear. Um, but yeah, you, you can find a lot of this stuff on Amazon. It's not expensive, uh, you know, 20 quid here, 20 quid there. Depending on your budget, you can get some items cheaper. You have a whole list come up with different price ranges anyway. So, like I say, Amazon. Shout out to Amazon because that's like my favourite shop. Like I shop there. Like that, I think that's the only place I shop at the moment is Amazon. I've been for the last um, few years. It's just my go-to thing. So yeah, this is a um, this is my solar charging pack. Um, works directly off sunlight. So it charges your phone. You've got a USB. As I've seen, as I've opened it now, it's the lights have come on. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the lights are on there, uh, basically telling me how much battery life I've got in it and stuff like that. You've got in the bottom here, you've got two USB ports and like a normal um, charging port in there for you to charge. Obviously, this pack because you can actually charge this um, at home and put power in it. So when you go out there, it's fully charged, but it will work off sunlight as well. Um, it also has a little, I think it's got a little light in there, it's working. There you go. So it's got like a little light, it's quite bright on there, but got a little torch, flashes. You see? Then that's a um, SOS signal. So it does like an SOS for you. And it, a blinding rave light in case you want to have a party out in the woods. <laughs> Fair with you, I've never actually used it. I've never actually used uh, the light on this, but yeah. So one of these is really it, it, it comes in handy because when you're going out there and you've got your phone out there and you're using your phone um, for sat navs and stuff like that to get to wherever you're getting to, you find out you get to the woods. Obviously, there's no electricity there, so uh, something to change to charge up your, your phone and maybe your head torch or any kind of other. Um, electrical items that you might take with you that use a USB port. It's good to have one of these. You go out for a day or two, um, it's perfect. It's It's got a little bit of weight to it, not too heavy, but again, it's a compact. I actually wear this in my chest rig um, when I go out on my bike. I've got like a, a, a Helicon Tex chest rig that I put in there. Uh, this cap comes with me. I did actually, um, I have actually recently bought two um, miniature um, charging packs for I think it was ten pound for two, which I've been using the past week at work and stuff like that, and they're coming really handy. They're quick to charge, uh, and yeah. So I've actually got a small, two smaller ones than this, um, but they them two are not solar charging. So this is my Wild Camp charging system. Comes in handy. Definitely get yourself one of them. It's a must. Then let's go on to. I've got this little item down here, which comes with me in my pack. I will do a video on this uh, with the lads and we'll show you uh, how to set this up. But this actually is uh, my my stool. This is the stool that I sit on. Um, so yeah, this is the actual seat and it's basically uh, put together by three pieces of wood. Um, three branches chopped into reasonable size and then basically lashed together to form a tripod and then you pop this on top and that's it that's your seat so it saves you tarrying one of them fishermen like them fishing stalls out with you it's flat packed it's a piece of fabric again amazon you can buy this off there or you can make your own 
But yeah, that's basically what I take with me as my seating system. Because believe me and you, when you go out there and you're camping and that, there's nothing worse than standing on your feet all day and not having nowhere to sit. And you don't always find a comfortable place to sit. So when you're pitching up and I don't like to really be sitting on a wet floor or, you know, just the floor in general, if I can help it. I mean, I will obviously, but, you know, it's good to have a little seat. So that's my, my little fabric seat right there. Uh, we have next up in the basket of badness, right, okay, so, this is my fire striker, in fact, you know what, now that I've pulled my fire striker out, I was trying to think to myself, yeah, where the hell is my tinder pouch? I think it's upstairs, somewhere, I hope it is, or Velocity. But this is my, this is like, when we, when I go wild camping or when, just, you know, any kind of outdoorsy um, activity that involves starting a fire, I don't personally like to use a lighter. I think it's cheating. Um, I like to use other methods to start a fire, as you can tell from uh, like past videos and stuff like that. But this is my ferrocenium rod. I can never ever say the word properly, but, or I call it my, like it's a ferro rod or whatever. But basically this is, my fire starter this is the best one that i uh, that i have i do actually have a um a gerber uh bear grills one as well uh more compact one which i, I take in my bag uh, just on everyday use just to have it there anyway uh around the top here i don't know if you can see what that is some black uh gorilla tape so it actually you, you know use it to patch up any holes in your bag or any clothes or anything you need to fix um, you can use that there. You can use it as a plaster if you haven't got your plasters uh, to cover a wound if you're out. Or you can actually use it as um, a means to start fire. So that will actually take a spark um, and ignite. I'm not going to do it on my table now because I'll burn my table and I'll burn my house and I'll burn my carpet and probably myself again. So, um, but yeah, so I carry, I, I keep some of that on there, which um, I use. Uh, it's a good like it's a good fire starter so um but yeah so this is my feral rod i would say uh, it, it's, it's a bit of fun as well you, you know take, get get one take it out try it um i think i, I don't know if you, i've done i don't know if i've done a video of starting fires with these or i'll have to check but we'll do a video of you know different like ways to start fires and whatever in the future but this is my ferrocenium rod um yeah so and it's Good old faithful trusty one uh, a few tools that i use so uh, i always take with me a i always take with me a shovel a little little miniature shovel this is my i've, I've had this for a few years um again very very trustworthy very trustworthy very useful very you know sturdy reliable that's our secret word for the day. Uh, it's got like a, it's got some, it's got like a serrated edge there, which you can use as a saw. It don't work as a saw, so don't fall into that kind of, um, you know, that, that that kind of marketing there and think that it's gonna be the greatest saw because it ain't. Um, some light shrubbery tweaks maybe, um, and then on this side here, it's got like a, a knife edge again. Uh, it it does work reasonably well but again for thin stuff yeah for don't think you're gonna cut down trees with it because you went but it's it's a good it's a good little shovel that i use and then obviously it does come with well, this particular one that i've got comes with an extension pole on it there are a few little attachments that um come with this that i haven't got on me at the moment uh but you've got a fire striker inside it uh, you've also got a whistle so i think this pops out there you go. That pops out into a whistle. In case you need a whistle. Um, it's a good way. Obviously, whistles travel louder than shouting. So, um, then you, like you screaming and shouting, a whistle sound will actually travel further than that, obviously. So, it's, um, it's a good thing to have on you, I suppose, if you're out and about and you don't know where you are. But that, like I say, that just comes with it. Uh, it also comes with a small knife attachment, which I say is not on it. Also comes with a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver attachment, which is not in it, which basically 
fits into this little hole here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you basically just attach these together for the length that you want. Like so. It's light, strong, it's well made. Uh, and like I say, I've used this for a while and it's never let me down. I've, I take it with me, in every, any camp that I go on, I take this with me for uh, obvious reasons. Um, and obviously if I'm out and I need the toilet, uh. you know, take this with me. So this is my shovel. You can pick these up as well. Like, like, a, like All these items that I'm showing you so far, you know, Amazon, uh, you're looking at, apart from, the, I, think the, I think the most expensive thing that I've showed today is my um, my bottle, the Bear Grylls Gerber flask. Um, I think that's the most expensive. I think that was, I mean, I can't remember, but it was about 50 quid, maybe, something like that. The, all these items, you'll pick them up for, you know, 20 quid here and there. Um, do you know, 30 quid, like you, it, it's, they're not, mind-blowingly expensive once you type in and you go on google and you look on youtube and stuff like that you'll find items um you'll find them cheaper anyway you just do a little bit of research and whatever you'll find them cheaper but this like i say this is just what i use this is what i have in my kit so um everyone's different everyone's got a different budget don't be alarmed that you know like some of the stuff that i get from car you know i can't get that or whatever it's you know it's, it's down to you see your own personal preference Moving on to some of the other stuff that I have. Again, this is the um, this is the Gerber um, saw folding saw. I did have a Bear Grylls line Gerber re like retracting saw, and it was uh, crap. If I'm being honest with you, like it was, I, I wouldn't recommend anyone getting that. It's, I used it once, bought it brand new, used it once. Cut through, I think. Uh, I think it was a, a, a branch of, I think it was like three inches, and it just bent the blade straight away. Uh, and in fact, I ended up leaving it where I camped, and, and like you know, I just I thought it was crap, and I got that angry with it. I just discarded it. So, but this bad boy here, this is a different kettle of fish. Folds out like so. Basically, it's got a little hook there. Twist it round, and then off, and you're good to go. And like, this is pretty new. I've only, I've actually, to be fair, I've only took it out on, on one um, outing so far, but it came in handy. And I'm telling you now, this makes short work of anything. It's, you, know, you ain't gonna cut down trees or massive stuff like that, and you shouldn't be cutting down anything alive anyway. But in terms of fallen branches and dead wood and stuff like that, you know, this just absolutely tears through it. So when you want to make some, uh, chop down some fallen dead wood into firewood or you want to, I don't know, build any shelters or anything like that, maybe try your hand at bushcraft and stuff like that. This is banging. 10 out of 10. Can't fault this at all. One of my uh, recent good buys that I've good purchases should I say uh that I've done and the blades are um replaceable so you can go online and if you break it which doubt you will unless you're really stupid um once it wears down and you need to replace the blade you can always get a new a new blade so yeah that's my Gerber folding saw and it just folds out it just goes back to the way it was but, but, Damage in my house. Falls back over. Boom. Away. 10 out of 10. Definitely recommend getting this item. Um, does the trick. It's got a nice little TP logo there. I don't know if you can see. I've just noticed that, you know, to be fair. Feeling it, mate. Feeling it. Um, okay. Another bad boy item. Well... Wow. A bad boy item, but yeah, another item that I carry with me. This is my uh, Fisker's axe. So this is what I um, take. Well, this is what I took with me um, when I'm out for obviously obvious reasons. But I found with this, I found with this, I like it's it's nice, it's small, it's compact. 
the edge don't really last very long on it to be fair with you and you do have to put um quite a bit of effort in even when chopping small bits of um kindling up or anything like that but for splitting small bits of kindling uh, it, it, it's okay when you first get it but it gets blunt really quickly it's got a nice flat edge at the back here for obviously you use it as a hammer hammering in pegs and stuff like that i had to put a bit of tape on it because the handle's got no grip whatsoever and it's quite slippy you've got a little linear hole there or whatever they call them i think it's that i don't know put a bit of paracord through it strap it to your wrist so you don't fly off and kill someone and hit someone in the head but um yeah i had to put some tape on it because it was a bit it was a bit ungrippable for me uh, it's quite heavy uh, it's got like a nice little weight to it but yeah I, I, I've, I've used it a few times i've took it i've had it for a, i've had it for a couple of years now but i've used it a few times um and it served its purpose i suppose you can get different sizes but obviously that's small it goes on my pack it comes in a nice little sheath there you can attach it to your bag and, and whatever else but like i say it took for me it just it, it just gets blunt too quick for even for just normal little use i actually use this now in my back garden uh to split wood uh, a few little bits and bobs from my fire pit uh that's probably what i'm going to keep this for use this for the most now I, I i don't think i will probably take this out on a wild camp again unless I really want to minimise my kit, um, you know, for whatever reason, and I just think, you know, I'll just throw that in my way. But I actually upgraded um, just recently, and I got uh, uh, a nice, a nice one sent to me. This is my new addition to my bag, and this is my Grand Force Brooks Outdoor Axe. Um, Mate, I, I can't even tell. This, this, this here, this is nice leather sheath on the top. All these are handmade. Like this, this is all handmade from Sweden. Um, comes with a nice little axe book on here, which I will. Comes with a nice little axe book. Uh, Grand Force Brooks or Brook, should I say, from Sweden. Um, and inside it, they come with 20 year guarantee, uh, which obviously tells you how good the quality is. Let me fix my hat there, done. See the hashtag RMGRTV, baby. Gonna get a tattoo on my forehead. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, 20 year guarantee. Grand Fort Brook um, comes with a nice little book. It, inside it shows you different things like how the axe was forged. Um, you know the the people behind the company. Uh, there's a photo of people of of the people there. Uh, they have it shows you how to limb logs, uh, from how to kill firewood, how to split wood properly, um, how to store wood, make fires, stuff like that. Uh, it shows you some of the different axes that they have. It's it's got it's got a section of axe throwing in here, so. I'll be around Billy Bandu's in the back garden, mate, practicing on your little target thing that you're making up, man, with this axe. No doubt, no doubt. But um, you've got like an axe guarantee card that comes in it. Um, but the one thing that I actually think that's really special about these axes and what I think is a bit personal and nice, um, other than the fact that they're built really good and like they're really well made, um, the handle's got a nice little curve on it. It's got a nice little, you know, it's got a good, good weight to it. Um, the leather sheath, you know, well made. It's got the little logo on there, the Grand Force Brook on there. And then, this is, uh, this is the thing that I think, you know, other than being hair splitting sharp from the minute you get them, and I do mean that these things are razor sharp, mate, like, I swear to God. Mate, I, I'll show you. Um, I'm going to do a video on this anyway. Uh, like I'll, I'll probably do a review day, down the line of actually what I think of it when I use it and take it out. But the one thing that I like about these is just there in, in the corner, you can see some initials. Okay, and obviously you can see the actual stamp from the company there. But you see those initials? Those initials are of the blacksmith who made this axe. And you can actually Google it. You can actually go on the website and find out who it was that made your axe. And I think... I think the, the guy that done mine was something Jesper. So uh, his, na his name is, I can't even pronounce his name, but it's something Jesper. I did actually uh, find him 
looking through the book and that now I can't see the bloody name, but you go and you go on the website, you'll see, but you can actually find out who the actual blacksmith who made it. That's his, their initials. They're all individual. Obviously you might have an ax that might come with JL, but if you actually know about these, this company, you'll know that they, they're blacksmiths, they're blacksmiths stamp the axes and it's razor, razor sharp. And I will absolutely watch like, Like that's just, this is like quite, the card's quite thick to be fair. I can get it in there. See what I'm saying? No, I get carried away, you know, and I don't even know why I put that in half, because I was going to keep that. You get the point anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? The, sh the sharp axes. Again, this axe here. So that's what I've upgraded to basically, and it's light and it's meant to be carried, it's meant to be, these axes are meant to be put in your pack, you know, you can just slide them in um, or attach them to the outside of your bag, like, like you, mate. Head torch, self-explanatory, take a head torch out, these are cheap, get them for all, 10 quid, 5 quid, 2 pound or so, forget having, have, it, have a torch if you want, whatever, but have a head torch. When you get in at your tent or your hammock and go for there you go in it, you get a head torch. So these are now both my two knives that I have. This is the first one I bought and this is the new one. And these are both heli knives, Norwegian, handmade. It's razor sharp don't i'm telling you now straight out of the box you can have a shave with it do you know what i mean not that i shave a lot as you can tell you know what i'm saying i'm getting there but um yeah lovely handmade knives from norway heli recommend these knives so sharp so good for camping bushcraft any kind of stuff like that uh i use it for absolutely everything when i'm out i use it for cooking i use it for um, starting fires as my striker. Uh, I use it for, um, you know, getting acquiring tinder. Or, you know, I use it. For, I use it for everything. It's, it's it's a it's a really really good company. Really nice knife. I absolutely love these knives. I think they're they're so well made, um, and the rays are razor sharp, and they keep their their edge for, you know, quite a while. Like I've had this now. I think I've had this for two years, and this is still razor sharp like crazy you know what i mean and then this one here this is my new one again this is from heli uh, this is the bushcraft knife um i can't remember what this one's called they've all got like mad names and that but um and there's different there's different ones it's not this one by the way is not a full tang blade so i think it's called like a pencil tang or a point tang or whatever they call it it's basically like the blade it gets thinner inside the handle and basically goes to a point at the end there so, you know someone's bound to correct me in the comments maybe i don't know but um but yeah it's it's still look mate the bollocks this is the new one this is the bushcraft uh heli knife i haven't actually i haven't actually had a chance to use this yet um it's brand new i'm planning on using it on my next outing uh but it's it's again uh, this is a full tang blade um which means obviously the blade goes all the way through the handle to the bottom as you can see on the side there but again razor razor sharp i'm gonna thingy but there get carried away but yeah razor razor sharp mate like two good knives Definitely recommend getting yourself a good knife. Um, you know, it's worth spending the money. These these knives are quite expensive, a um, couple hundred pound uh, per knife, but you know, they're worth every penny. They're well made, like I say. All the handles are proper wood. They're all made from different woods. Um, like, like different grains on them and whatever like it's, the leather cases the leather sheaths are well made um yeah i actually seen a video i actually seen a video of someone who who had 
one of these knives and he basically said that you know this was my grandfather's knife and it's still razor sharp to this day and he was like in his 30s or 40s or whatever so these are knives that you literally can hand down and pass down to your family um and, or like almost like family heirlooms like the the that good so I, I always recommend getting yourself a nice well uh like handmade a well made handmade knife so um yeah they they Definitely spend the money on getting yourself a good knife. Obviously, get yourself familiar with the knife laws in the UK as well when you're going out and you're doing your camping and stuff like that. You do know that obviously these kind of knives can't be carried around in public. Um, obviously, if you're out and you're camping and they're in your bag and you, you've got, you know, you've, you, you're out doing something like that, then it's a bit of a grey area. But just bear in mind that obviously it's illegal to carry uh, knives here in the UK. So, unless, of course, they're under a certain um a certain size which i think is three inches uh, the blade and they can't be locking they have to be um they have to be folding they can't have a locking me mechanism on it yo so um th those were th those are just a few items um like i say that i have in my bag everyone's different billy bandu jim drones they all carry um similar kit but sometimes obviously the items may differ so it's just down to your own personal preference of like you say, what you um, feel that you need, um, what you want to carry. Uh, I, will, I will say that obviously me, there's me, Billy, and obviously Jim Drones. Um, when we're out, we don't, everybody doesn't need to have the same item. So we don't need to have free axes. We don't need to have free saws. Um, you know, one of you can carry them. The other person don't that frees up space for other stuff so if one person wants to carry the tools the other two don't need to carry tools one person wants to carry the food the other person doesn't have to carry the food so you basically just you have your load out to how it's um you plan it strategically of what you need to carry and who can carry what or who needs to take what with them um to maximize the effectiveness of obviously your trip especially if you're going with more than one um more than yourself and more than two people or whatever um Really and truly, when you go wild camping, you really want to be doing it on your own or keep your groups really small. Like I say, I would say no more than the three of you. Um, but, you know, it, it's just a way of obviously making sure that you've all got what you need and you're all comfortable. You're all um, happy with, you know, the items that you're taking with you, basically. So those are just a few things that I have in my pack. Uh, but if there's any questions or if there's anything that you want to know, um, or particularly how much I paid for it or whatever, then just you know, leave a comment or if you're on Instagram or Facebook, send us a message and we'll be happy to reply back to you and, and, and let you know any information that you need to know. If we've missed something, let me know and I'll, I'll help you out.